Hi. I've done my favorite books of the year video. So now it's time to talk about my favorite films. I usually watch a lot more films than I read books and I usually do a hundred film challenge but because I wanted to spend more time reading I actually reduced that to 50 and I think I'm on 60 or something like that. If you'd like to see the full list of all the films that I've watched I'm on Letterboxd. Um, books and quills on there really easy and then on my brand new website slash blog I don't really know what to call it I guess website I've also added like all the films that I've watched um, since like 2009 because I'm the kind of person that keeps track of that but it makes it really easy to at the end of the year have a think about which movies I've actually seen and which ones were my favorites usually I don't just go for films that came out this year specifically I just talk about all the films I watched for the first time this year but when I looked at my list I actually went to the cinema loads and I saw loads of films I loved in the cinema so I'm actually gonna start with all the films that came out this year that I saw in the cinema and then there's gonna be some honorable mentions at the end for other films I feel like there's not gonna be a lot of surprises in this but I'm curious to see if you like probably thought that these were my favorites number one hidden figures loved hidden figures probably one of my like very very favorite films of the year I'm so glad that this is a story that got told on the big screen I'm listening to the book as an audiobook and I made a full I think like 30 minute or 25 minute video with my friend Clarissa talking about the film and why we love it so much I don't think I've heard from anyone that I know that didn't enjoy that film the soundtrack is fantastic and it's one that I'll probably be re-watching quite a lot in case you haven't seen it yet it's about the african-american women that worked at NASA who had a major role in a lot of the space race and the space launches. It's about the different challenges that they face in these roles and trying to get to a better position and paving the way in industries where they haven't been accepted before. Next to there is Moonlight. I don't think this film needs any explanation but it was absolutely beautiful to watch and I cannot wait to re-watch it. I saw most of these films in the same cinema as well so whenever I Think about like describing these films I keep picturing myself in the same cinema which is an independent cinema in London that I really love the next one is get out I love horror films I love gory films this film was such an amazing surprise as in it's a really nice mix of humor and being absolutely terrifying it's about a couple and the boyfriend is going to meet the girl's parents for the first time they're gonna go I think from New York to a more like suburban area and it starts off with him saying, do they know I'm black? And she's like, oh, they, they won't care about that. And he goes into this like really rich white community and something is off. Something is really off. It's fantastic commentary. It's such a like satisfying film to watch as well with the ending. It just hit all the right marks. Then there was Okja, which is the only film on this like 2017 release list that I didn't watch in the cinema because I watched it on Netflix. It was a film that I'd heard lots of people talk about. A lot of people were saying that it made them want to go vegetarian, which is quite interesting. I thought it resembled like the Hunger Games quite a lot, especially with one of the like loopy main characters. But it's about a um, small girl. I actually don't know where they live, but they live somewhere very remotely on this mountain. And a lot of different farmers around the world are given these creatures that are kind of like a dog meets hippo and they're told to raise them but they're owned by this corporation who then takes them back and wants to sell them for meat and it's the story of this young girl chasing after Okja who is the, the animal that she raised and is basically her best friend and it's heartbreaking but like a beautiful movie to watch. When I was in Florida I watched Star Wars by the way American cinemas some of them hilarious. We had like these massive electronic chairs that you could basically just like lay flat um, but we're also at an almost empty cinema. It had been out for a couple of days and it was like right before Christmas. I loved the new Star Wars film. I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. I've only seen all of the films quite recently in the last couple of years. So I didn't have any fan theories. I didn't read anything about it beforehand. I just went to see it and loved it. And that's all I have to say about it. That's kind of how I feel about Thor Ragnarok as well. I actually went to see that in IMAX, which was a great decision. It was for someone's birthday. I love Chris Hemsworth. I love the Thor films. And this was just so entertaining. And also I think it's like one of the films I saw this year where the audience laughed the most. Like the audience engagement was really good. You could tell that people were having a good time and I just left that cinema feeling great. And then finally the last movie that I saw in the cinema this year, and it was actually physically also the last movie I saw in the cinema this year, is Lady Bird with Saoirse Ronan. I love Saoirse Ronan as you guys might know and the film's not out here until I think maybe February. 
So I, it was out in the US and I really wanted to go and see it and it is just really nice. It feels like a very real high school experience. It's about a girl who is trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life, where she wants to go to university. And it's a lot about her relationship with her mom, which is like, again, too real. Um, you should definitely go have a look at the trailer. The music was great. It was just awkward in all the best ways. I had a good time. I know a lot of my friends have like done a lot of crying while watching that film as well. Then I have four more films. Two of them I watched for the first time this year and two of them are repeat watches, but they're favorites that I wanted to give a shout out to. So this is the bonus section. First of all, The Place Beyond the Pines with Ryan Gosling. I had not heard about this before. How do I describe this? The internet says, it's set in upstate New York where two men and later their sons must deal with the unforeseen consequences of their actions. And I guess that makes sense. It has some bank robberies in it. It has a lot of Ryan Gosling on a motorcycle. I think he has like a face tattoo in it as well. It's again, like a really interesting movie to watch and one that I hadn't heard of before ever. So that's why it was like quite a nice surprise. Then I saw My Neighbor Totoro. I did see it in the cinema. It's a special screening that my friend Lex set up. I actually watched another Studio Ghibli film um, which was Howl's, Howl's Moving Castle in the cinema this year, but I think Totoro was more of a favorite for me. Again, it's one of those that I've heard so much about and then I finally got to see it this year and the music was so cute. It was stuck in my head for like a solid month, um, but it's about a little girl, two little girls who discover this creature Totoro in like a secret pathway in their backyard and it's very adorable. Then finally there's the two films that I've watched over and over again but I watched one of them during Christmas and one of them on the plane and they just both made me so happy. One of them is The Holiday with Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz where they switch lives. One goes to LA and the other one goes to I think it's Surrey, like a, a cottage in the English countryside because they're both sick of their lives. It's funny, it's mega relatable and the older I get the more relatable it gets. It has Jude Law at what I think is his hottest. The scenes where he's wearing his glasses, great. We just all sat around over Christmas and watched it and it was brilliant. And then finally, which is a great one to end this video on, it's 13 going on 30. I saw that they had this on the plane when I was going to the US and it just cheered me up so much. Again, it's a film I've seen a bunch of times. It stars Jennifer Garner and it starts out, I think it's in the 80s, um, when she is 13 and she is bullied and she just wants to be, what is it, 30, flirty and thriving. She reads about it in a magazine and then she makes a wish and then she wakes up and she is 30 and it is just hilarious. Like it's a 13 year old trying to live a 30 year old's life. She's a magazine editor and someone's trying to backstab her. So if you're in a bad mood and you want to just treat yourself, then I suggest watching this film. So those are all my favorite films that I watched in 2017. I'll put trailers to all of these below so you can like get lost in that corner of YouTube and watch a bunch of trailers. I would love to hear, of course, what your favorite films of the year were or like your one favorite film, especially if it's one that I haven't seen yet because then I can go check that out as well. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Doi!